Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel where every day is Christmas. Whoa. Max Liner. I'm not too sure what this is. I'm at a point now where I don't even know what I'm ordering. But these are all with their floor mats for the Silverado. Aside from that stuff though, we have some other stuff going on with Silverado today as well. So last video I forgot, a very important part of the LED makeover. These are gonna be reverse lights for the Silverado straight from last fit. These are gonna play a very important role in safely backing up the Silverado. If you guys have not grabbed your new last fit lights yet, head on over to last fit's website. Use coupon code MBN10 at checkout for 10% off your entire purchase from last fit guys. You will not regret it. Go get yours right now. I also have a new set of low beams from Light Moses with a 360 degree light output. That is exactly what we need for the proper illumination out of the headlight assembly. Not only do we have low beams, we have high beams as well. We are not skipping out today, boys. We are lighting up the roads. So these are gonna be a little different in terms of color temperature from the far ends. The far ends were a 6500K and these are a 6000K. I think a 5000K is like a pure, pure white, so 6,000K should have a very, very slight blue tint to it, which I think will look really nice. 10,000 lumens, material, copper. Wow, packaging is so sick. So the first order for today is to remove that locking pin right there. Unfortunately, the previous owner does not have the key for it, so... I gotta cut it off. Just like that. And now I can finally install my trailer hitch receiver cover. So sick. And since we're back here, may as well do the reverse lights. And out with the old school, in with the new new. So the only thing holding the truck from going in actual reverse is the emergency brake, so they look great, but uh... So now that we have the hitch ball removed and the LED reverse lights in, time to work on the front end. That is going to involve removing the entire headlight assembly once again, but this time to remove the foreign LED bulbs. If you guys remember last video, we didn't have the best luck with the foreigns, being that the way the bulb is designed, it only pushes light out in two different directions, which doesn't help the beam of light project properly with this headlight assembly, which is very similar to OEM. So to fix that issue, we have these lights from Light Moses with a 360 degree light output, which is very similar to the OEM design, the OEM gas lights. So we should get the best result from that with these. So yeah, that is going to involve removing the headlight assembly, the grill, that plastic cover in the engine bay to replace the low beams and the high beams. So let's get to it. At least this time around, we should be a pro. They don't need a ballast. They stand alone. Those look so sick. This right here is the high beam, so let's pull this guy out. Switch it with the 9005 high beam from Light Moses. Oh, look how sick those look. Now it's time to pull out the new all-weather floor mats, the Max Liner from SmartLinerUSA.com. I can't begin to express to you guys how happy I am to get rid of those.
Seems like the perfect fit so far. Sure does cover a lot of surface area too. Cool part about the rear floor mat is it covers every bit of ground, even under the subwoofer box. The subwoofer box is aimed directly down into the carpet, which means that absorbs a lot of the base. So having it bounce off of the floor mat should give us a lot more sound. So far, so good. The fitment on the rear is really, really nice. It even goes underneath the back part of the center console. Really nice coverage. Only thing I'd say for right now is it's having a hard time kind of resting down on the edges. Something that should go away after a nice hot day. So more to come on that, but for now, looks good. And for the most important portion of today's video, we have some new tow mirrors for the Silverado. These things are so sick. So I went with the all black plastic option. There's also an option for chrome cap and I believe a primered and ready to paint option as well, but I think this looks the best. These also have a turn signal in the face. There's also a turn signal right here in the glass and a reverse light function there as well. These things are sick. Nice and snug here in the garage. Started absolutely pouring out of nowhere. California has been very unpredictable lately. Let's get to removing this sports car mirror cap. I can't believe GM did that on a full size truck. Even with a stock setup, I get it. My truck needs bigger mirrors at this point, but even in its stock form, that I don't get how that does the job. Step number one to replacing the mirror assembly, we have to remove this whole door panel to gain access to the three bolts right here that hold the assembly on. There's also a wiring harness somewhere back here so we can disconnect that and then run our new wires through the boot right here and feed that into the engine bay through the firewall, starting with removing this door panel right here. So I think we start right here. All I had to do was release that tab right there with a flathead screwdriver. This thing pops right up. Remove this plastic piece right here and this one right here. Boom. Another little door right here. I'm gonna pry this off. Hang on. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Success. There's one more plastic cover behind the handle or the grab bar. That's going to expose the five 10 mil bolts. One there, one there. One there and two right there. If you guys don't have like five 10 mils laying around, what are you doing? I'm just kidding, but seriously, what are you doing? Time to pull. All right, so there's a couple things to unplug back here underneath the window control switch. Oh yeah, okay. So all that's taken care of. All right. Now the handle cable's free and clear. Now we have the three screws that I have to remove. I believe they're also a 10 mil. So before removing that last bolt right there, I'm gonna unfasten the wiring harness. Boom. All right, I'm gonna hold this. I'm gonna do the last bolt. Uh, okay, we just need one to hold the mirror from inside. That'll do. Uh, I mean, it's not like terrible, but there's definitely a gap up there. I don't know. <laughs> That's so sick. Love that. What's going on right here? Dude, no. Okay, I'm gonna try to undo the screws, like loosen everything up real quick and see if that fixes anything. Still looking a little cattywampus, but I don't know. Not a huge deal. It doesn't look that bad. It's definitely noticeable more so in real life. Not so bad on camera, but it is consistent on the top and the bottom as well. There's a little gapage right there. It sits flush right here on the edge. Then it kind of opens up here on the top. It's kind of noticeable if you're looking at it. But if you're not really looking for it, you can't really even tell it's there. That looks so sick. What? Oh my gosh. That is so sick. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yo, we got Tomo. No way. Oh my gosh. That's so sick. This is hands down the hardest part so far. So I'm trying to finesse these wires through the boot. I taped it up to my 
plastic pry tool. That's like the only way to really get it through because it's so tight in there. That's kind of working, but dang, your finessing skill is going to be on point to put this through. Jeez. Oh, uh, yeah, and just like that, finally fed it through. That was a challenge. The wires have been fed through the door into the cab of the truck. The mirror assembly is all good to go. So now we can reinstall the door panel. Anyone doing this at home, here's the trick to removing the link off the door handle. So there's two little clips right there on the inner side of that tab. You have to pinch those two clips right there with the needle nose pliers, and then this thing pulls right out. After you flip the door panel upside down, it's a lot easier to access. We got this, I think we got this. Oh. Yeah, buddy. And then, it's a matter of just, uh, Unlatching it. This wiring harness right here is for the mirror assembly, so all I have to do is attach that. And then you can pull that straight through. The trick is to get this sleeve as straight as possible and then feed your wire through. Passenger side door is all put back together, leaves nothing more than this red and black wire being fed into the cab from the passenger side mirror. So these two wires that I ran into the cab of the truck actually only power the rear facing light on the new mirror assembly. Everything else is controlled through the wiring harness that plugs directly into the window switch module. The new wind, uh, mirror assembly has two harnesses. Unlike the OEM mirror assembly, it only has one. The new one has one identical to this one, which plugs directly into the window switch module, but it also has one more harness coming out the side, which we ran into the cab of the truck that we're gonna splice together with the driver's side, and then run those together as one unit through the firewall, and then try to find the fuse for the reverse function, because that's when I want those lights to go on. Also, I think it's really cool how, even though my truck didn't come with the turn light function on the mirrors, I still have the option of doing that as a plug and play, which is really kind of cool to me. Unlike with the newer models of really anything, it makes it near impossible for things to be plug and play anymore because there's so many computers involved. My 2019 Silverado, when I wanted to add fog lights to it and make it behave as OEM as possible, that required me purchasing a wiring harness the fog lights themselves, after installing everything, getting everything plugged in and wired up, I then had to go down to the dealership and have, have them flash my computer in order for it to operate as OEM, which I didn't do. I wired them to my headlights, so anytime the headlights were on, the fog lights were on as well. That's how I went about it because I wasn't trying to go the dealership route, going to the dealership and having them flash my computer. It's more fun for me working on this truck because there's no computers involved for the most part. I can just plug and play the new mirror assembly and the turn signals will work, which I think is really cool. All right, so here's the two wires coming from the driver's side. Here are the two wires coming from the passenger side. So what I'm gonna do is run some extra wire, enough to feed into the engine bay and into the fuse box. Tap in somewhere right around here. So this should be enough to run through the firewall and into the engine bay fuse box. 
So I'll cut it right here. Cut that right there. All right, so now that I've stripped open all the ends of the wires, time to put all the ends together. And I just realized I don't have any bunt connectors. So what I'm have to do for right now, just for a temporary fix, which is totally fine, just not ideal for long term. I mean, it would work, but I'm using electro tape instead until I can get some bunt connectors and do it the right way, make it more waterproof. But in the meantime, electro tape's just fine. It is non-conductive, so it's totally safe, but just not ideal. Splice together all the black ones. All right, so all the ends are wired together, and now what's left to do is run these two wires through the firewall and wire them into the fuse box. So I have both wires ran through the firewall. The black one here is ground. The red one's getting tapped into a fuse for the reverse function, which I found right here. Diesel's on the right. We have a gas engine, so we are the left side. Fuse location number 10 is trailer backup. Location number 10 is that one right there in the middle, missing a fuse. Since I already pulled it out, I'm going to tap this into fuse number 10 using a fuse tap, and then we'll ground the black wire. Fuse location number 10 calls for a 15 amp fuse. So that one here is going on top there, and then we're gonna throw another fuse, another 15 amp fuse right there on the bottom. And just like that, so we have both fuses in the fuse tap. Again, the original one is, is right there on top. That's the original, that's the OG fuse right there. And then there's our expandable fuse right there. We're in, the black wire has been grounded to the chassis. We should have power. Now, if my calculations are correct, when I hit the unlock button here, that should power on the reverse lights, the headlights, and the lights here on the mirrors. Let's go. What? So for starters, the headlights are definitely a lot brighter than the far ends, or at least project a lot better than the far ends. Nothing against the far ends, they just didn't work with my headlight assembly too well. These things are like dumb bright. Wow. Hit the brights on them real quick. Oh my gosh, what? That building is lit. That is insane. What? Unfortunately, I can't power on the brights and the fog lights at the exact same time since these are wired into the factory fog switch. I really wish I could drive with these on at night. Obviously I can't and I won't because I'll blind everybody in my path, but they look so sick on. I'm not gonna be that guy, but it would be cool to have those on a little more often than I can. But yeah, they're bright. As for the lights on the mirrors, I am genuinely impressed with how bright those things are. Those are super bright. Plus, I love how it's angled too. It doesn't just shoot light directly behind you. It lights up at an angle, which is great because we have the reverse lights back here to help light up this area directly behind the backup camera, which is great. But then we have these over here kind of helping light up the side area, which is awesome. Look how bright these things are, like based off my shadow. And I'm way behind the back of the truck. like. I'm still getting crazy shadows. It's wet, it's windy, but I have to show you guys the turn signals here on the mirror assembly. They look so, so sick. It is so cold and so windy, but how sick do those things look, guys? I am genuinely impressed. And the whole it not laying flush thing here on the side, honestly, it's not really even there. I might have just noticed it when I was installing it, but I really don't see it at all anymore. So then we have the turn indicator here on the glass as well. I was gonna go with the Boost Auto Parts mirrors, but I try to try as many things as I possibly can on Amazon simply because you have the review system there. The return policy is flawless. If it ends up being junk, you can return it, no questions asked, no hassle ever with that. And I always have good luck with Amazon stuff. So definitely happy with these. Link in the description below. I, it's five stars for me. I'm hopping back on the main road right now to get some speed to see if when I hit like 40 or 50, even 60, if these things rattle. I know one issue with these cheaper mirrors is the glass likes to rattle sometimes. Dang. 
It's a McLaren 570S, a $190,000 car just laid on the center median. That sucks. Doing 50 miles an hour right now and I see literally no shaking. If I do, it's very minimal. But nothing noticeable, also very wet. So the window is going up. But yeah, no shakes. We're chilling. We're on probably the darkest road that I could find in the immediate area. So there's with the lights off and that's with them on. Pretty good, I'd say. And there's the brights, <laughs> definitely travels pretty far. You guys probably can't tell too well on the camera, but with the lights off, I mean, these things with them on, they, I can see far. I can see stuff lit up like a quarter mile away, which is really cool. So that's low beams, there's the high beams. Pretty impressive. Now for the reverse test. So all that light you see right here, matter of fact, let me cover these things up show you guys the difference between these covered and uncovered. That is a massive difference. Covered, uncovered. <laughs> covered, <laughs> uncovered. That is impressive. Push these things out a little bit, see. Oh, there we go. Get some range on these things. That's, uh, that's definitely gonna help. Oh my gosh, it's freaking cold, but everything came out absolutely fantastic. The tow mirrors look amazing. They work as designed. Look at that, full tow mode, baby. That's so sick. That gap right there isn't that bad whatsoever. It's barely noticeable. Definitely more, I can't even talk, it's so cold. Barely noticeable, but more so when the sun is out, obviously, but still, it's barely even there, especially at like a foot or two away. It's, it's pretty much non-existent. The floor mats are starting to relax a little on the edges and it hasn't even been a hot day yet. It's been absolutely freezing. Look at this, already putting these floor mats to good use. The fitment is absolutely perfect. Such good coverage, real good fitment. I do still need to tuck away some wires. I'll get to that later on today. Everything is starting to fit real, real nice. All the edges are starting to relax and the subs hit like twice as hard bouncing off the floor mat versus the carpet. So. Stoked on that. Well, yes, everything came out fantastic. I'll have everything linked in the description below that we did today. Go and check it out. And don't forget to head over to Lastix's website. Use coupon code MBN10 at checkout for 10% off your entire purchase. Do not regret it one bit, but it is absolutely freezing. That is all I have for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you guys on the next one. Till then, peace out.